So I think it's going to make a big difference. And if you think about uh, the, the industries here and, and what, what the Space Coast means to space exploration for the whole world, uh, we're going to have astronauts back on the moon. Uh, and we are going to have astronauts on Mars eventually. And we need to do that. It's important to do that. And that's going to be something that's done right down the road from here. So uh, you're going to have folks that are already in that industry, of course, that are going to be a part of it. Now with this program, we're going to have more Floridians that are going to be able to have really, really good opportunities. And, and not just good paying jobs, but to be part of something that's really historic. So I'm looking forward to that. And I support those efforts. I also uh, was a little bit... Um, perplexed when I heard that the president is scrambling to get his cabinet together uh, to try to address the fact that you have governors who are helping to relocate illegal aliens to sanctuary cities. Now, he, he didn't scramble to get his cabinet together when we had millions of people illegally pouring across the southern border. He didn't scramble to get his cabinet together when you had 43, 53 migrants die in some trailer in Texas because they were neglected by the federal government. You didn't see him scramble to get his cabinet together when we had Americans that were victimized by criminal aliens that he led across the border. You didn't see him scramble to get his cabinet together when we hit record fentanyl deaths which that fentanyl is coming across his open border. It's only when you have 50 illegal aliens end up in a very wealthy, rich sanctuary enclave that he decides to scramble on this. And so I think what we are doing, I think what we're continuing to do is use every tool at our disposal uh, to insulate the state of Florida uh, from the negative ramifications of his reckless border policies. And yes, that involves helping with transport. Uh, it involves suing on catch and release, which we have done. It's involved making sure that contractors are held accountable if they're facil facil facilitating this into our state. And we have a statewide grand jury that's looking at different types of practices that may be going on in the state that's exacerbating the problem. And so, uh, the end of the day, this is a massive policy failure by the president. This is a massive and intentional policy uh, that is causing huge amount of damage all across the country. And it's all rooted in a failure to take care that the laws are faithfully executed and to fulfill his oath of office. And so instead of scrambling and worrying about a bunch of rich people and having 50, and oh, by the way, they already bust them out. They're gone. They said, they said we want everyone, no one's illegal, and they're gone within 48 hours. Uh, and so why not actually look at what's going on? There were more Acela corporate journalists in Martha's Vineyard today than have ever gone down to the southern border to look what's going on. Why don't you go down there and look what some of those communities have to deal with every day? All right. Anybody? How many of those 50 that you referenced started their flights in Crestview on route to Martha's Vineyard. How many are from Florida, those 50? So well, what we're doing is, and so we got the $12 million for the legislature, thanks to these guys. And honestly, I have to say, on a bipartisan way, almost every Democrat voted for our $12 million for relocation. They're complaining now, but they all voted for it. Um, we, we were, so we've done stuff in the panhandle, but what we found is we haven't seen any major movements of people into Florida like big caravans. The only caravans we saw were people that had H-2A visas. Well, those are obviously legal workers. So we've interdicted people on a onesie, twosie basis, and we said, okay, so we've had people in Texas for months trying to figure out how are these people getting into Florida, what's the movement? And the reality is 40% of them say they want to go to Florida. And so that's a lot, I mean, when you talk about all those people. But the problem is if they're coming in through with like three people in a car and they go through, it's hard for us to know because they're just coming into the state like any other car. So if there's not a big movement. So they've been in Texas identifying people that are trying to come to Florida. 
and then offering them free transportation to sanctuary jurisdictions. And so they went from Texas to Florida to Martha's Vineyard with the flight. There's also going to be buses, and there will likely be more flights. But I'll tell you this. Uh, the legislature gave me $12 million. We're going to spend every penny of that to make sure that we're protecting the people of the state of Florida. Because they're intent, most of them are intending to come to Florida. They are coming to Florida. We, we are taking them from Florida to sanctuary jurisdictions. But the issue is, if you want to do it effectively, um, you just can't police if you have two people in a car and there's a hundred different cars that come in a different week because it looks like your car or anybody else. And so we've put a lot of e emphasis in this. There's been a lot of investigation to try to figure out how this is going. I initially, when I asked for the money, thought Biden was going to be busing because, you know, he has sent midnight flights all around this country. You know, they're complaining about one nice flight or two flights into Martha's Vineyard. He will dump people in the middle of the night without anybody knowing. They've done it in Florida. They've done it in New York. They've done it in other parts of the country. And so we were anticipating that. In reality, what the federal government's been doing, they're just abandoning these people. So these are people that are just kind of left high and dry. Uh, a lot of them are trying to hitchhike. Some of them will pay smugglers to bring them into different states, including the state of Florida. And so our view is you got to deal with it at the source. Um, and if they're intending to come to Florida, or many of them are intending to come to Florida, that's our best way to make sure that they end up in a sanctuary. And why sanctuary jurisdiction? Well, they give them benefits. They do. And so that's likely what they're going to do. Why are we not doing that? Because we're not a sanctuary state. And we want to make sure that we have people here legally. And the thing is, the cost associated, and the thing is, is yes, the drugs have been catastrophic. There are criminal aliens coming across the border, no question. But even just the sheer volume of people, when you impose that on communities, that's massive cost to just the social system, education, health care, public safety, all those different things get very, very taxed. And you saw that in stark relief when one of the wealthiest enclaves in America, indeed the world, said they didn't have the resources to deal with 50 people? Well, how do you think some of these border towns feel? How do you think some of the people in Florida have felt uh, that have seen the drugs or seen criminal activity? And so that's what we're really trying to do. We want to make sure that taxpayers are not having to foot tens of thousands or thousands of people uh, coming in illegally, and that's the most effective way uh, to do it. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's totally false. I think if you look, the folks that are contracted, not only do the people, do they give them a release form to sign, they actually give them a packet, and in that packet included a map of Martha's Vineyard. So it was obvious that that's where they were going, and they gave that to them. And, the, and, and here's the thing, it's all voluntary because it's just the type of thing where we think that's the right way to do it. I mean, I think that if, if the states could send, I would send back to Mexico or back to the home country. But here we are doing it voluntarily. They sign a release, and then they get a packet. So they did get a packet that had the map of Martha's Vineyard. And they're also treated you know, very well with all this. I mean, they're, they're treated well with meals and everything. This is not, I saw somebody on CNN try to say, sending 50 illegal aliens to wealthy Martha's Vineyard is reminiscent of the Holocaust. And I just thought to myself, uh, has the world gone totally mad? I mean, these are voluntary uh, transportation that they're signing up for, but they're given a, a good ride, they're given everything, and that's just, you know, it's a humane thing to do. What's not humane is what Biden is doing. He's false, given a false promise, the border's open, luring people to come here for political purposes, and then basically cutting these people loose and leaving them high and dry. What he should say is, you know, our border's not open, uh, you know, there's ways to apply to come to this country, but just simply barreling across the border is not one of them. And I think you can trace all this back to him coming to office and reversing President Trump's policies, not because the, Trump's policies were wrong. It was all just a big virtue signal because they don't like Trump, so they have to do everything the opposite of him. Well, now I think we've seen 
with New York City and DC, when they used to beat their chest when Trump was in office saying they were sanctuary jurisdictions, and then the minute Texas starts busing there, then they get very bent out of shape about it. And so let's just do good policy. I am happy that um, our, and these are just the beginning efforts. I mean, we've got an infrastructure in place now. There's gonna be a lot more that's happening, but I'm glad that this has now put this issue on the front burner because it really should be on the front burner because this is an intentional policy uh, that is having really negative implications for not just border communities, but for communities all across the country. And, and I think there needs to be accountability and we need to make sure that we know, do people stand for secure border? Do they wanna make sure that Florida is not gonna be a sanctuary state? And how are you coming out on all those issues? Very important, yes ma'am. So, no, no, no. They are, they are identified as, as wanting to go to Florida. You know, when they come in, so I had people last summer at the border, and, and I didn't, you know, we were just trying to help Texas, and, and my guys were like, you know, a lot of these people want to come to Florida. I'm like, oh, man. So then more recently, we have people on the, on the ground there, and it's pretty consistent, about 40% mentioned Florida. And so what we're trying to do is profile, okay, who do you think is gonna try to get to Florida? And if they, if they get in a car with two other people, there's no way we're gonna be able to detect that. So you're trying to identify who's most likely to come. And then obviously, if they end up coming to Florida, then that's gonna impose a lot of costs on the communities. And so we're trying to avoid that. So that's how you're doing it. They're not told that they're, that they're gonna stay in Florida. They're told that their ultimate destination, uh, in this case, was, was up in Massachusetts and with Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, so what we do, I mean, so, you know, we, we've hired a contractor. There's a bunch of stuff that's gone into creating the infrastructure. Obviously, we've also, you know, done the flights. Um, you know, we may collaborate, but I got 12 million for us to use, and so we are going to use it. And you're going to see more and more, but um, I'm going to make sure that we exhaust all those funds because I think it's important. I think people want to see that we're actually standing up and trying to protect the state against Biden's really, really reckless policies. So look, these are ongoing things. I mean, you know, so you're going to look, obviously there's going to be buses like Texas is doing. You know, there may be, uh, there may be some more flights. You know, Martha's Vineyard is a little bit different because it's an island. So you kind of got to either fly in there or take a ferry. So that was, uh, that was one way to do it. But there's a whole bunch of other places. But I would say that all we're trying to do is offer transport to sanctuary jurisdictions uh, free to the, to the alien, uh, but certainly not mandatory. And that way they're able to go and these sanctuary jurisdictions can put their money where their mouth is, they can provide the resources, they can do all of that. And then once that happens, the chance of folks coming to Florida is probably very, very low. So that's why we're doing it. And um, I, think, uh, I think we're gonna continue to do it. Yes. I think it'll be all of it. I mean, obviously, I think you guys know, you know if you go to Southern Volusia County, there's a lot of people that, that commute into Kennedy and have done that for a long time. You look at a place like Embry-Riddle and what they offer here. Uh, so yes, there's a lot of great opportunities um, right here in Daytona Beach. And it'll really, I mean, some of this is gonna affect Jacksonville because you've had, had companies I Jacksonville and be in Jacksonville. We'll go all the way down to Indian River and and St. Lucie counties with some of this stuff. So I think this whole stretch is primed uh, for, for a really, really good run. What's that? So no, no, I mean, I think this is the important thing. So, you know, we have a lot of refugees. I mean, we have people that come from Cuba, they end up in the Keys, and they're seeking asylum, and a lot of them have valid claims. But I think what's happening is the asylum process is being abused because they're trained by activist groups to claim asylum. So you'll have people that are in a whole bunch of safe countries, and they keep going from one safe country to the next, 
and then try to make an asylum claim in, in the United States. That's not how it works. Uh, and so that's why President Trump's policy was really the right policy to say, okay, if you're making these asylum claims, most of these are not valid. We know that. I don't think anyone dis disputes that. So you need to remain in Mexico uh, while you're making the policy. And that's the way it should be. But I would definitely, you know, I would definitely draw a distinction between, you know, some of what we've seen, say, in like southern Florida, where people have qualified for asylum, uh, versus this process that Biden has unleashed, uh, where you really have multiple countries that are safe that you're traversing through uh, just in order to do. And then what they're doing is, is they're saying you're going to be adjudicated sometime in the future, but then they release them uh, basically into the interior of our country. So ideally, us doing the transport to the sanctuary jurisdictions, ideally that would not be necessary because the people making the claims would remain in Mexico. If there's somebody that, that really is clearly uh, gonna, gonna qualify, that's different. But I think you talk to anyone down on the border, it's 95 plus percent uh, are not uh, valid uh, asylum claims. And I don't know, I think part of it is the way it's being enforced. Maybe Congress needs to tweak this because it's not right. And what's going to end up doing, because it's so overwhelming, you know, it's going to cause people, you know, kind of to react in the opposite direction. And there may be people that really do uh, deserve it and merit it who we normally want. And maybe they will end up getting rejected in the future. So it's really short sighted, I think, if you really want to help, you know, those relatively small number of people who, who do qualify. Yes. So uh, the governor of California um, sent a letter to the Department of Justice saying, you need to prosecute Texas and Florida governors. And all I can say is, um, I think his hair gel is interfering with his brain function. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see ya. So when Biden is flying these people all over the fruited plain in the middle of the night, I didn't hear a peep out of those people, okay? I didn't hear a peep. I haven't heard a peep about all the people that have been told by Biden you can just come in and they're going, they're being abused by the cartels, they're drowning in the Rio Grande. You had 50 that died in some shed in Texas. I heard no outrage about any of that. Uh, I haven't heard outrage about all the fentanyl that's come across the border that's killing Americans in record numbers. I don't hear, I don't hear outrage about the criminal aliens that have gotten through and have then victimized people, not only in Florida, but all throughout the country. I didn't hear any outrage about that. The only thing I hear them getting upset about is you have 50 that end up in Martha's Vineyard. Then they get really upset. And I'm sorry. Those migrants were being treated horribly by Biden. They were hungry, homeless, they had no, no opportunity at all. The state of Florida, it was volunteer, offered transport to sanctuary jurisdictions because it's our view that one, the border should be secured. And we want to have Biden reinstitute policies like remain in Mexico and making sure that people aren't overwhelming. But short of that, if you believe in open borders, then it's the sanctuary jurisdictions that should have to bear the brunt of the open borders. So that's what we're doing. But what happened was they were, they were provided um, an ability to be in the, the most posh sanctuary jurisdiction maybe in the world. And obviously, it's sad that Martha's Vineyard people deported them the next day. They could have absorbed this. They chose not to. But what it shows is if 50 was a burden on one of the richest places in our country, what about all these other communities that have been overrun with hundreds or thousands? It shows you when now these policies are on the front burner, people need to be talking about. Biden can't defend his policies of open borders. Uh, it's doing huge damage. Uh, to our country. It's costing a lot of money. It's costing lives with the drugs that are pouring across. And so the question is, is why are you supporting Biden's policies? Why don't you step up and tell him you're failing and let's do it differently? Because you know what? 
He inherited a border that wasn't like this. He has created the crisis. But now at least we know nobody can deny that there's a crisis. Everybody now knows, and it was only because you had to have the elite who want to have the cost on everybody else and they don't want to have to shoulder that. That's the only reason now people are talking about this. Well, I would say read, I would tell them to read Florida statutes. We are required to teach slavery, the post-reconstruction and segregation, civil rights. Those are core parts of American history that should be taught, but it should also be taught accurately. For example, the 1619 Project is a CRT version of history. It's uh, supported by the New York Times. They want to teach our kids that the American Revolution was fought to protect slavery, and that's false. We know why the American Revolution was fought. They wrote pamphlets. We saw them dump tea into the Boston Harbor. We saw them meet in Philadelphia. And we have the records of why they revolted against King George III. And so it was the American Revolution that caused people to question slavery. No one had questioned it before we decided as Americans that we are endowed by our creator with unalienable rights and that we are all created equal. Then that birth abolition movements. So you can't teach history that's being used to pursue an ideological agenda. You can't teach uh, that the foundations of our country uh, were somehow evil. Our, our founders pledged their lives, fortune, sacred honor, and they put a marker in the sand. Not everything lived up to it right away, of course not. But every major movement in our country's history has gone right back to those core principles. So we want to teach history, all history. It's got to be accurate, though. And we are not going to be in a situation um, where we're taking George Washington's name off schools, taking down statues of Thomas Jefferson. And that's what those people who want CRT want to do. They want to change history. They want to delegitimize these folks, um, and that's not what we're doing. But don't let anyone tell you we don't want those subjects taught, because not only do we want it, we have it in statute that they must be taught. I can't, I cannot confirm that, I can't. Well, we, we, we do do both. So, so we've had interdiction in the panhandle. The problem is, is we're not seeing mass movements of them into Florida. So you end up with a car with maybe two. And if we know that that's illegal and there's someone that's kind of smuggling, then, then committing crime, then you can do arrest. There have been drug seizures. But that's not effective enough to stop the mass migration. But it's just coming in onesie twosies. So we've had people on the border for last summer. We've done a lot of intelligence. And everyone down there will say between a third and 40% of the people coming across uh, are seeking to end up in Florida. And so we have to go and figure out, OK, who are those people likely to be? Uh, and if you can do it at the source and divert to sanctuary jurisdictions, the chance they end up in Florida is much less. And the thing is, with the sanctuary, the, the idea is, is because they have more benefits or whatever they do, that people would, will be able to stick. And so that's why you're doing it. If, if I could do it all in Florida, I would. But if we just ignore the source, then you're going to have people trickling in 5, 10 a day, 20 a day. I don't know. But there's no way you can possibly track all of that because it's on such a small scale. Whereas if you know there's a, maybe 1,000 people down there and a lot of them say in Florida, well, you could say, well, hey, wait a minute. Here's a sanctuary jurisdiction. Be able to provide the transport. So if that's what you want to do, you do. And I think that that's much more effective. Than, um, than just trying to send one or two out um, at a time. Also point out, you know, there's, we have a whole infrastructure 
in place now because of what the legislature did. So it's not just flights, you know, we have ground, we have other things um, that, that we can do. And I'll tell you this, uh, it's already made more of an impact than anyone thought it could possibly make, uh, but we're gonna continue to make more of an impact. And I think that at, at the end of the day, what we're doing uh, is not the ultimate solution. I think it's opening people's eyes to the solution, which is let's have a secure border let's have remain in mexico let's take the cartels seriously and let's get with the program here what they have been doing for a year and a half or more than that is basically ignoring that the problem exists and i know a lot of the national corporate press doesn't like to talk about it uh, but the reality is when you have the vice president saying there's no border crisis when we've had millions of people come across illegally uh, you've got to be kidding me. So let's get let's get going. Let's get this thing secured. I, unfortunately, I don't think they're going to do anything in the immediate. Uh, it will be a big issue in the elections. I can tell you that. Uh, but hopefully, when we get through with that, that we can have some rationality. If we have a new Congress, you know that may be a big step in the right direction. But this is not an example of hey, you know, he tried his best and just didn't work. This was an intentional policy to reverse policies that were effective and you want to talk about they'll say like oh you know sending a bus from texas is a stunt all this the biggest stunt was biden coming in as president and reversing trump's policies just so he could virtue signal that he was against trump it didn't matter that the policy had worked he had to be anti, and so that's why he did it. So he did it knowing, I think, what the impact would be, and the impact has been devastating. I really hope more people will start to cover uh, the destruction we're seeing with the fentanyl crisis. I mean, we put a lot of emphasis on it uh, be when I became governor. COVID obviously made it more difficult, but what's making it almost impossible is the sheer volume of this stuff that's been pouring into the United States. And I'll run into uh, mothers, and it's so tragic because these kids are not making like really horrible decisions. Maybe they do one or two things wrong, but the fentanyl is so deadly that they'll overdose and some of them will die. So this is a huge, huge issue and it's affecting American communities all across the United States. And I also think when you have things like criminal aliens that have been let in, you know, Maduro, the reports are Maduro is releasing people from his prisons and sending them up to the southern border and you know you these these leftist dictators have done that in the past so you're bringing in people they're coming right across the border and then they're going in the interior of the country that's not going to be good for safety in our communities i mean that's going to be a big problem and we already know that you've had uh people that have been victimized by criminal aliens who've gotten across the border and the reason why those crimes are so difficult to stomach is because if the federal government had just done his job, the crime would not have happened and the person would not have been victimized. So this is something that's really important and these are things that people need to start talking about. And I think what also with Martha's Vineyard showed is the very wealthy community, 50, not a lot, uh, and they said they couldn't accommodate. And let's just take them at our word and say maybe that's true. If the wealthiest island, one of the wealthiest in America can't accommodate 50, then you're looking at all these other communities and they're just supposed to accommodate all this more. So I think what it's shown is when you have the sheer numbers of people coming across illegally, even take out the criminal aliens, just the sheer numbers, you know, that has huge stress on the communities. And I remember last summer going down to the border and it was bad, but it's gotten a lot worse. This year is the worst year uh, that I think we've ever had in modern American history.